First is Park Han Ho's manager. The main character is the only survivor after a mass murderer killed everyone in the orphanage. He's forced to change his identity and leave behind the town, including the only friend that he ever had, which he made a promise to always stay by his side. Seven years later, he's focused on finding the serial killer responsible, so he gets a job under an arms dealer to find more information. Obviously, the arms dealer is the guy from his childhood, so it's like friends to lovers, but it's all also friends who get separated and find each other again. The semi is that complete savage type and ruthless as well who treats everyone extremely cold but is only kind to the Uki. It's a slow burn that does take a while for anything to happen but it's such an interesting and gripping story that it doesn't get boring. You're just anxiously awaiting what's to come and the art style is pretty simple and basic but the plot heavily makes up for it. Next is our companionship. The main character plays this MMO RPG and he meets this noob in game and he decides to help him out because he's so new to it. He invites him to join his guild and they've been friends online for months and he finally meets up with him IRL and never would have guessed that he's a big scary gangster. It's interesting to see this kind of gaming trope mixed with mafia as well. It makes it a very interesting and unique plot. It's very different and it's kind of cute as well straying from the normal, scarier mafia type. The MC is actually really sweet and both characters are very likeable. Unfortunately, the friend and side character who the MC was in love with, but it was an unrequited love, he's not really the appealing type. His character was a bit of an annoyance, but it does provide that love triangle to give the story some drama, so I didn't actually mind it. The art style, of course, was really pretty. I love how the characters were drawn with more of a softer look with a lot of rounded shapes. Next is Shutline. The main character is this dodgy mechanic who is willing to do anything to keep a customer coming back, even if that means tampering with their car a little. He lives a life on the bottom, so he's always done this to get by, but this time he's messed with the wrong person from the mafia. I know I don't have a lot to go on with only nine chapters so far, but if I have to eat my words later, I will. I don't really care because I just love this series. First of all, we have this super hot, beefy Uki who is a mechanic, which is not really seen before in BL. Then this stunning blonde Russian mafia god who's just got this weirdly hot appeal to him. The setup to this story just ticks all the boxes so far. The characters are older and have a more mature vibe and also a bit of a dangerous feel with the whole mafia thing. It's been incredibly unique so far and it started off with a bang. I believe it's going to be a great story. Next is Cover Up. The main character is a tattoo artist and while running away from a violent ex-boyfriend, he takes a perfectly timed opportunity to travel abroad to Japan. In Japan, he's going to be working on a full back tattoo to cover a scar for the son of a gangster family. The art style and character designs were definitely the standout of this series. The Uki breaks away from that soft, cutesy type and just looks completely badass. Also, the tattoo artist theme was something that hasn't been done before, so I wish the plot focused on that more. It is extremely dramatic with an abusive ex and a love triangle with this cold and gloomy type gangster, but he's actually pretty sweet. He can be ruthless at times if needed, though. I think the violence might be a bit too much for some people. I mean, it's definitely not nice to read about, but I know there are some people who can tolerate it and some who absolutely can't. So just warning you now, the ex-boyfriend is a real piece of work. Next is Deliverance of the Counter-Attack. The main character lost his lover, family, and then was thrown into prison. The day before his release from prison, he spends the night with a man and accidentally becomes pregnant. Once he's out, he starts his own business and works hard as a single parent, but that's when the child's father comes back into his life. This story has that real soap opera type drama that is infuriating, but for some reason just so enjoyable and you can't stop yourself from reading it. It is an mpreg story and the main character does have a baby and I must say that's like the cutest thing about this story. It's just the most adorable thing ever when you get to see those really wholesome family moments. It's got good comedy 
comedy and it's got a lot of angsty drama. There's always something going on so you'll never get bored and the characters are just so lovable. Next is Max Mojave's case. It's a story about a guy who witnessed a murder when he was younger and the guy who committed the crime let him off despite being a witness. After that he takes an interest in investigating crime and as he gets closer to uncovering the truth the killer decides to join the investigation. Obviously he doesn't know that he's the killer and that's what makes this such a great suspenseful crime story. The characters are amazing and so well done and the writing just has so much thought put into it. The relationship dynamic is exciting. It'll make you be on the edge of your seat the entire time. I also extremely appreciate the restraint with the R-rated scenes. It's not crammed in every chance you get. It's executed perfectly and actually adds value to the story. The art style as well is beautiful with a very soft vibe that suits the setting really well. Next is Lifeless Man. The main character is a highly respected surgeon who has the highest success rate in his operations. He also has this special ability to see the lifespans of other people above their heads. One day he has a run-in with a ruthless gangster but for some reason he can't see his lifespan and becomes really curious about him. Honestly I love this story but hate it at the same time. It's brilliant and the plot is unique. It's well thought out and very intriguing. The concept and the depth of the story actually really impressed me. But unfortunately it is incredibly sad. It's just one of the most tragic BL webtoons I've read to this day. I am deeply saddened by it and it hurts a lot but it's still such an amazing story if you can manage the heartbreak. It is definitely a must read. The art style is unique and incredibly beautiful. It's got this eerie look to it and some of those facial expressions left a really big impact. It's a very memorable and well done comic. Next is The Thousand Cranes. On the way home from work the main character accidentally witnesses a murder in an alleyway. His life has already been filled with misfortune now to make matters worse he's been hunted by a very scary organization. He's been caught and held hostage by this mafia boss but luckily he manages to end up on good terms. It seems like this big scary guy who is chasing him isn't so bad after all. It is a bit darker especially the character designs and the black and white dramatic art style just adding to the threatening aura of these characters but they're actually super sweet. It's like all this madness and ugliness of the world happening around them but when they're together they're in their own world of happiness and it's actually a really good romance. The writing though could have used a little bit of work as I felt the characters were just missing something. Next is Dispar. The main character is an illegitimate child and treated like a complete outcast in his own family. His family also being part of the mafia and very dangerous people. Even his own brother treats him as a slave and rules over his life completely. He's treated so poorly it is enough to make you cringe at times and when it seems like there is some hope for the Uki to get out of this toxic environment the semi suddenly loses his memories and starts acting really kind towards him. He's clearly in love with him but only tries to make him stay by his side by using force. I don't know, I'm just still not ready to forgive the semi. I don't think he's worthy of redemption at this point. But still, I was really interested to see where this was going to lead and if the Uki would get out or not, so it is frustrating. This has been on hiatus for such a long time now and I am unsure as to when or if if this will ever be continued. So just a warning before you go ahead and get invested into it. And last is Circle Trap. It's a story about a guy who is on the hunt for the traders who attacked his organization. Although when he got to his house he found a man sleeping in his apartment who claimed to be nothing more than a homeless person squatting. Not buying his story he decides to keep him imprisoned until he can find out his real motives. It really has a lot of mystery but the characters were just so interesting from the beginning with their bizarre behavior and secrets. The characters are so intelligent always playing mind games and it started off so strong. Unfortunately it was just a little bit too short and it seemed like everything was wrapped up in a little bit of a rush. To me it felt like the author kind of gave up on the story which is a real shame. The art style was amazing with very sinister looking characters and the psychological elements were great. Everything worked so well 
world together. It's just the ending that was a little bit of a letdown. So that's it for this video. Those are all of my recommendations. If you did enjoy it, please leave a like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.